Hey y'all, this is Jada Johnson. I'm an artist, a painter, and a sculptor, and uh, this is Conversations with Love. Tune into the next episode. What it do? Y'all see it. This is episode number two. Best believe it. And we got Jada Johnson here. JJ. Um, yeah, JJ LL. <laughs> it just goes yeah. together. It's perfect. Amen. Um, but no, basically, I just want to uh, have her come in and let her tell her story about her art, everything she has going on right now. So I'm going to let you just give a little intro, who you are, where you're from, yeah. and we'll go from there. All right. Well, um, I'm Jada Johnson. Um, I'm from Boston, Massachusetts. I'm a, I'm a New England baby. Mm -hmm. um, I came down here to a, um, first Louisville, Kentucky, um, in high school. Gotcha. Um, you know, my, my family, you know, they started expanding, so we wanted to, you know, be able to have a better place to settle down and everything. Gotcha. So, um, Question for you. How yeah. was Boston? Boston was something like, else. Compared compared to Louisville, how was Boston? Mm -hmm. Like, what's the okay. what's the difference? Yeah. If you could talk about that. The difference is the uh -oh. sheer amount of family. You know. Ah, uh, okay. The entirety of my family's up in Boston, so that's both sides. So gotcha. everywhere I go, and any little corner I stop on, mm -hmm. I'm gonna see my family there. You going to Boston? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Here, I say like people are a lot more open and a lot more um, kind. Got you. Um, compared to up in New England, so it, it, it did let me uh, get a chance to get out my box and be able to, you know, feel as if I could express myself a little bit more freely. Okay, and real quick disclaimer: we are actually shooting this video in Lexington, but she's she's living in Louisville, right? Wait, what did I say? Did I mess it up? You live here. I <laughs> messed it up. I messed it yeah, up. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm thinking. I'm thinking Louisville. I've been in Louisville too long. So I've like, moved around a lot. So <laughs> okay, that's, okay, that's okay. That's well, y'all look. We are gonna cut that out the script, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but no. Um. So so with um as far as being in Boston, tell me mm -hmm. about your childhood. Like yeah. You know, high school, middle school. What did you do when you were mm. what? Especially with the art tip, like, did she start doing art when you was in middle school, yeah. high school, that kind of thing? Yeah, well, um, as I was saying, like, I, I've, uh, I've moved around quite a bit. So okay. um, my, my time in Boston was actually uh, relatively short. Um, mm, okay. I lived there up until I was about five. And, you know, we would go back and forth. But um, most of my uh, childhood, I actually grew up in a very small town in a Lewiston, Maine. Oh, okay. Yeah, gotcha. so it, it was, uh, it was, they called it the Dirty Lou. Dirty Lou. The Dirty Lou, you know, <laughs> was the only one that we had, you know. Oh, okay. So, gotcha. it, you know, there was a very small um, black population there. It was about 2%. So wow. my experience, you know, growing up was I, I was, you know, the black kid, mm -hmm. you know, compared to uh, a lot of my, you know, counterparts who and were. And that's in school, right? Absolutely, gotcha, absolutely. Gotcha. Okay. So my experience was very much um, a little bit altered in the sense of compared to when I came down here to, um, Kentucky. to Kentucky. You know, gotcha. it, it was definitely, um, the move was definitely a, um, eye opening in the sense of I was now kind of categorized in the sense of uh, instead of just being, you know, one of the other black kids, I became the light skin. I became, mm, you gotcha. know, anything else other than just another, you know, black, black person. Student. Yeah, black, black student within the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, gotcha. absolutely. So um, being able to kind of differentiate um, those sort of things was um, something that was it was hard for me to kind of overcome because I felt like I was being blocked out from the community gotcha. in a way. Okay. But at the same time, it was something I had to reckon with. Gotcha. You, know? you just got to deal with it. Yeah, Absolutely. I see what you're saying. I see Absolutely. What you're saying. And even to that point, like for me, uh, I grew up, I mean, I'm from Lexington. Mm -hmm. And when I was in high school, I mean, Lexington is a pretty diverse city. But mm -hmm. I remember growing up being, I used to get the, the quote of, you act like a white boy, right? Mm -hmm. um, because the high school I went to, Tate's Creek High School, they would like, it was like, it was mixed, but mm -hmm. my friends that I just naturally was like drawn to, I guess, were the white crowd, just because I grew up in the suburbs. Mm -hmm. um, and those were just the people that I was around. But yeah. again, I'm still black. So that's mm -hmm. how I looked at it. I'm like, you know, don't get it twisted. Mm -hmm. This is just where I live. And this is almost mm -hmm. like, uh, uh, what's the word for it? It's uh, your surroundings kind of make you kind of who you are. Absolutely. And Absolutely. At that time, you know, that's what I had to deal with. And then I moved to Louisville, got to see a whole different kind of uh, different vibe, a lot more black people up there, a different mm -hmm. culture. Uh, so I've learned that even looking back now that I'm 24, I'm like, wow, I said, this is why I was in this. This is why I was hanging out with most of the white kids, because that's Absolutely. all I knew. That's all I saw, Absolutely. really. I had two of my best friends. They were like all three of us, or maybe three or four of us were um, like, we were the only kind of black guys that were hanging around all the mm. white people. Um, which was a great experience because it just taught me now. Absolutely. Just how to learn that whenever you move mm -hmm. to that point of you moving around a lot, 
you might move to Seattle, you might move to LA, you might mm -hmm. move to wherever, and it's going to be a different vibe wherever mm -hmm. you go. Um, yeah, one thing that I've, um, especially throughout all the moving, is location um, can definitely change perception and perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. so how you look at yourself can change. You know, based on who is all around you, right. but also how they look at you can change because yeah. they have a completely different set of background. They have a completely different um, kind of perception. Yeah. So it's, it's, everything is based in perception. Yeah, even from language, how people talk, certain Absolutely. slang. Absolutely, absolutely. Because I was gonna tell you this, but when I first met you, when mm -hmm. we were at the pool, yeah. I heard that Boston, that, that, yeah. that just, accent just, just came out, bit, and I wasn't gonna say that, but I said, <laughs> just, I, heard, just a bit. I said, okay, I could hear it, so you yeah. was there, I, so, I, you know. I heard it with a little bit of Kentucky Yeah, uh, just so, but playing. you kind of yeah. mix it in there a little <laughs> yeah, bit, yeah. But it's funny, because I'm from, like, well, not, I'm not from there, but my parents are from Memphis, mm. and sometimes I have, if you know, like, Money Bag Yo, he'll always yeah. be like, I'm from Memphis, yeah. you know? <laughs> like, so, Matt Bruzy, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But, like, I kind of have my, sometimes I have my little moments where I'm, mm. like, I wasn't born there, but it's in my DNA, literally. Absolutely. So, I have my little, mm -hmm. little Memphis, like, what's going absolutely, on? <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> But, uh, anyway, so we're going to go transition into the next thing, mm -hmm. so let's go into the art, so sculpting, yeah. so with... Again, going back to like your like growing up, what mm -hmm. what what at what time did you like realize? Oh, this is what I like to do. This is what inspires me. Yeah, um, that it's kind of thing. it's always been something that I was always just super interested in. Like um, I did dance a lot when I was younger, mm -hmm. um, and they had me doing acrobatics and stuff. Okay, and I was like, flipping hey, and tossing and yeah, <laughs> they had me do a, hand, a handstand. And I was like, hey, big girls don't go go like that. Okay, I'm just I, I, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to tap out on that uh -uh, one. This ain't for me. Yeah, it's just I not for you. me. You know. <laughs> So I, I really wanted to start focusing more in on um, like my painting and my sculpting. Um, it was painting first that really kind of took off for me. Um, it was just a lot easier to be able to kind of mix together um, any sort of images that I want to be able to create any sort of story. Gotcha. You know, I, I liked the idea of storytelling. Um, mm. And then it was slowly but surely that I got into um, actual, like, actual sculpture. Um, when I was in high school, um, I went to um, a school called Ballard in uh, Louisville. I know about that. Yeah, yep, and yep, um, yep. I got into a Governor's School of the Arts, GSA. Oh, I know GSA. Yeah, yep. yeah, mm -hmm. and I was uh, one of their creative arts people, and so. Talk to them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, I got, I got that little scholarship. <laughs> Um, but it was it was very open to be able to play with all sorts of different mediums. Mm -hmm. um, like we got to do printmaking, we got to do sculpture, um, both like in ceramics and in just like finding different materials. Gotcha. Um, and then you know definitely got to play in you know our painting and everything like that. Um, but during that experience, I really fell in love with actual ceramics. Mm -hmm. um, and so I really um, going into um, college, I really wanted to have a large variety of um, knowledge in different mediums um, so right. that I could excel in everything Every and just build up me mm -hmm. and build up my visuals and, and just make whatever I wanted to make. Gotcha. You know, no, it's, it's more so about the actual messaging than it is the medium. Yeah, I see what you're saying. And so yeah. with that, I have a question. So I always like to compare kind of music, Every like I'm a mm -hmm. big music kid. Absolutely. Everybody knows that, DJ Love, all that. Mm -hmm. but. When in my writing process, for example, mm -hmm. I don't. Sometimes I'm trying to figure out what's the concept. What am I trying to oh, achieve yeah. on this song? Yeah. So, I, but you're doing like I'm building it from scratch. Like it's just literally thoughts that come mm -hmm. to my head. So, how is it that you are able to take a sculpture and mm -hmm. be like, I'm out to take some mud, some clay, or yeah. whatever, and put this together, and this is mm -hmm. what I want to do. So, like, what's like what what gives you inspiration? Life experiences, mm -hmm. things you just see out, something like that. Yeah. So I, I take a lot of inspiration from a lot of different places. Um, so uh, in school right now, I'm a African American studies minor, gotcha. um, and same thing with art history. So I like to take my own history, mm -hmm. African American history, um, whether not only just African American, but um, throughout the diaspora, mm -hmm. and... Um, Big word. Yeah, amen, hey. amen. <laughs> gotta, gotta use them button words. I've seen it, yeah. I see you had to sprinkle yeah. that in, yeah. Um, and then also, like, art history, too. Mm -hmm. So I like to pull from, you know, all these different modes of culture. Right. Um, and be able to see where does all of that intertwine. Mm. And in whether it's just certain topics of things that I've lived through, things that other people have lived through, and, you know, things within history, things that we've presented a certain way that gotcha. might not actually be what it seems. Um, and so just through a combination of all of those things, I will create um, an idea, the concept, mm -hmm. and then the actual choice of the medium comes 
like after, way after, after that. that. Like I, I base everything within the concept and then rely on the skills that I've learned. That you've learned. You know, to be able to put everything into action. So this might be hard for you to explain because you mm. don't have like the all the utensils yeah, and everything. Yeah. But how do, it's like so like how do you do that? Like how do you take what do you start off with? Do you get clay mm -hmm. and then you just kind of build it? Do you get like a, a stencil that yeah. you kind of set up and it's like okay you mm. gotta get a 3D print? I yeah. know you talked about printing earlier and mm. like doing that. So like how do you do that? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Well, um, for my sculptures, I mm -hmm. have to give a shout out to Bobby Scroggins. He's my mentor at UK. You know, heard he it. has really, um, really taken me under his wing mm -hmm. and um, really uh, taught me this uh, process called um, uh, the hollow core method, um, mm. direct hollow core method. So through that process, you build an armature and that can be like a full blown welded metal armature or right. even just um, some strong um, pencil wire um, that you can um, be able to just kind of mold into any shape you need to. And then after that, you put um, tissue paper over top of the um, rigid form. And the next part, which is um, putting fishing line around that, is really the, the key element. You need mm -hmm. to be able to make sure the piece survives. And that keeps everything together, I, I'm assuming. When it actually the... will take everything apart. Oh, the fishing will? Yes, oh, so okay, once you okay. um, put learning. all that on there, mm -hmm. You start hunking that clay on. You just, just throw, throw it, it on mm -hmm. there. You throw it on. You get it. You know, just as fast as you can. It's a very, very quick process. Mm -hmm. It like max. It should take you about three days to be able to complete this. Gotcha. Um, but you know, if you're a little slow like me, maybe about a week. Might take a little longer. It's <laughs> okay. Little it's okay. Little, it's okay. We all got to start yeah. somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, I'm still somewhere. working on it. <laughs> um, but yeah, you just kind of throw it all on there. Get mm -hmm. it about 80% done. And once it's um, dry on the outside. Um, they call it about pumpkin hardness. You know, has a little bit of bounce to it, it's but like it's still it's not, sticks. I know what you, yeah, I know, you, you dang, know what now, I'm now I'm thinking about touching you know a pumpkin. I'm, I'm like, yeah. ah, it's a little, mm -hmm. not too squishy, but it's a little hard. Absolutely. You know? yeah. And then you mm -hmm. take that fishing line and then you pull it up and it's going to cut it from the inside out. So the outside's hard, the inside's very soft. Mm, so okay. then you can take out all that excess clay and gotcha. then put everything back together. So it's like kind of making a mold without the mold. Gotcha. You know? Um, so that when it's actually put into the kiln to be fired, um, it doesn't explode, there's not excess moisture, it's very thin, it's very lightweight, and it's um, a lot more durable because you're building a scaffolding pretty much on the inside of it. Gotcha. Um, it's a very, very interesting process, but like knowing all that kind of technical ability um, was something that was very big for me to learn. Um, and like in addition, like with my paintings, that process, you know, normally starts with yeah, that's what um, I was ask you about yeah, next, the paintings. You know, yeah. Let's get into that. Let's get so into that, that. That normally um, starts off with uh, Photoshop. So I, I, I use that too. you know, just just <laughs> yeah. you know, start off with the basics mm -hmm, and all that. Mm -hmm. You know, I gotta just like gather together a bunch of like images. You know, whether it's you know my own childhood images, which I've really been focusing in for my thesis exhibition. You know, getting my story out there. Right. Um, and you know, maybe pulling images from history, pulling images from art history too. Um, whether it's just composition to allude to a certain messaging, allude, uh, allude to a certain allegory. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, combining all of those to be able to get in essence what I want to get down, get. and mm -hmm. without actually having to worry about how all of these are merging together, yeah, as it, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 because the actual process of painting and the actual process of getting the image down is really what's gotcha. going to create the artwork. But I think the first, the most important part, and the first part that needs to be done is to get down the concept and placement. Yeah, and that's so, that's always the biggest thing. Yeah, you know, like with me with music, it's like. I gotta just get get something out. Like, yeah, I just gotta just Absolutely. go in the studio, sing. I know that da 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 is gonna go. So it's yeah. like you just might mm -hmm. do a couple of strokes. Okay, mm -hmm. this is kind of where I want to take it. Absolutely. Um, yeah. But with that, so who, um, as far as uh, with painting, even sculpting, mm -hmm. if you could hit on both topics. Yeah. Who are your like inspirations as far as either if it's local artists or mm -hmm. if it's like you know older artists, you know, mm -hmm. from back in the day? Who are like yeah. some people that you look up to? Um, um, so, wise, yeah, both of them. a lot of the artists that I look up to are a lot of black artists. I like to um, kind of stick within my own realm. You know, I think that within, you know, looking at um, who was praised in art history mm -hmm. um, is very different from a kind of a black perspective. You know, like gotcha. I feel like a lot of people like Carol Walker, um, um, Bet Yeh Sar, um, Allison Sar, um, you know, Kehinde Wiley, and even like contemporary um, um, African artists like um, Mwako Boafo, um, or Christian, um, Christi, wait no, Christian um, Mangovo. Mm -hmm. um, like those artists, they are like 
kind of still operating and they are very much still overlooked in the sense of they're only seen as, you know, black artists making black work instead mm. of, you know, seen as celebrated within, you know, the whole art community, the entirety mm -hmm. of the art community. Yeah. Like they are, you know, preaching to a specific, you know, um, demographic. Yeah, but absolutely. They, they also make more than just that. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, when it comes to like what inspires me, you know, I want to be able to look at work that was made for me. Gotcha. You know, and I want to create work that is made for, you know, people like me, like me. Mm -hmm. that that can relate to me, that can, you know, see what I'm also seeing. Because it's not even you have to look like me or, you know, have a similar background. Right. Of you just have to be able to open your eyes and understand. Absolutely. If you watch, if you look at this picture, you're like, oh, I can see what she's mm -hmm. trying to paint in this. Mm -hmm. OK. Yeah. Because like, if music, you're awake, you can see if you know, if you know, I'm like, mm -hmm. if you don't know. If Amen. you know, you know. If you don't, that's mm -hmm. on you. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Definitely on you. Mm -hmm. um, so one thing, so I pulled out my phone. Sorry, I know you're like, oh, are you pulling out the phone in the middle of the interview? <laughs> but I wanted to show you something. So I wanted to hit on the um, the award show, the, or the, what was this? Yeah, uh, Nsika. Nsika, yeah. So yeah. can you talk a little bit about that experience? Yeah, so Nsika is um, a, a ceramics conference um, okay. that um, I was uh, blessed to be invited to. Um, and uh, I got to do some tabling events for uh, the University of Kentucky, and right. it was um, up in Cincinnati. Gotcha. Um, and it's pretty much just like uh, an educational conference where you can, you know, be able to get the chance to check out a bunch of different schools mm -hmm. um, that offer really great ceramics programs, and also just gets you connected with um, a lot of uh, ceramicists that's, you know, all throughout the country. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and um, through that experience, I was able to go to so many galleries. I. Sh in the two <laughs> days, I think I went to about six or eight galleries. Mm -hmm. It doesn't sound like a whole lot, but when you're seeing that much artwork, that's a lot of art. It's so mm -hmm. much. It's so it's like, overstimulating. I know what it's like when I go into like a 21C yeah. and I'm walking around. I'm like, this oh my is, gosh, there's like 50, 60 different pictures I could be looking mm -hmm. at in one at one little mm -hmm. gallery. So yeah. I'm sure I definitely get that. And like you know, being able to you know have you know a lot of different types of artists too from so many different types of communities like kind of being in one spot all convulging like is was so so interesting and mm -hmm. being able to be touched by just about everything that I saw was um, really just like a, a life-changing like experience yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so this is one thing um, this is actually gonna be the last question and then we can just kind of mm -hmm. talk after that but um, so one thing about me is I'm really big on mental health mm -hmm. and for me, I've always used my music as an outlet as far as like, you know, when I was going through some of my lowest moments, instead of me maybe going to Twitter and ranting about it and doing whatever, mm -hmm. I'm like, let me go talk about this in my songs. Absolutely. Um, I went to therapy and one thing my therapist told me, he was like, you know, maybe you should start writing, like journaling. Mm -hmm. Journaling didn't work for me, but what did work was writing a song and putting the song together. Absolutely. And for me, that kind of helped me you know, work on my mental health and mm -hmm. when I was in those kind of low places. Um, so all that to say is, do you feel like art is that, is that like one of those outlets for you to kind of just decompress? I don't think about nobody else. Yeah. Not, I could put my phone down and so I just want to see what you feel about that. Yeah, like, no, I totally believe like art is that for me. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of starting with my um, thesis exhibition, like I would say that the entire process of creating was um, doing shadow work, in mm. my opinion, for myself. Um, mm. Kind of diving into that kind of unconscious, um, diving into you know the things that I wasn't willing to reckon with myself. You mm. know, um, you know, having to be able to you know, really reach into those parts of myself that I, you know, might not have wanted to reach yeah, into. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it was art. turned off by, was just mm -hmm. wanted to avoid at all costs. Um, but having to, you know, lay it all out, you know, especially for everyone to be able to see, to be able to judge, to be able to critique, mm -hmm. um, was, I think, the most challenging part, especially like, you know, I'm getting a grade for this too, you know, right, when, right. It, when it comes to, you know, submitting some artwork and stuff, you right, know, because right. since I'm still in school and all that, like, being able to, you know, have to be judged on it, yeah. it was uh, another step in being able to really heal, right. you know, um, and yeah, like, I, I would say that um, the entire process was really difficult to get through. Mm -hmm. um, it's still difficult to get through, but right. it's so much needed. Yeah, and I think that's like the biggest thing with artists is 
you have to, you're putting out what you think looks good, sounds mm -hmm. good, feels good. Mm -hmm. And when you're sharing that with the world, I think especially nowadays with social media, mm -hmm. you can have a thousand people sit here and like it, or you could have two people mm -hmm. like it. Then you're like, oh, that wasn't good. Yeah. And then you kind of get in your head and like, oh, but you had to, one thing I've realized, you have to go, you have to remember, remember why you created it. So Absolutely. If you were going Look past through, the aesthetics. Yeah, like if you were going for right now, this is, this is my vision. I like this. This is, I know this is what I want it to look like and this mm -hmm. is going to be dope. And then once you finish it, you're like, this is great. Mm -hmm. And then when you share it with people, then that kind of takes you back. And they, or if, if it either it's good or bad, mm -hmm. you know, bad reception from other people. Um, but one thing I've realized is that's kind of made my mental health stronger because then I can mm -hmm. sit here and even like the, this interview now, it's like I just wanted to do a concept. I don't know everything about, you know, putting on a show, a podcast, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. um, but it was like, I got to do this for me because yeah. I've always wanted to do it. And now I'm finally able mm -hmm. to do it. So nobody can tell me. Anything. It's always about those first steps, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, and, and like thing. being able to be grounded within yourself to be able to say, it doesn't matter what you think about this work at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. It's more than just aesthetics. Right. You know, it's it has meaning, it has value within itself. Whether it's not, it might not be valuable to you, mm -hmm. it's valuable to me and it's valuable to others. Right. And it, if you just don't get it, you just you don't, don't get, get it. it. And this is my story to tell. Absolutely. And that's how I feel about art. Absolutely. Like, this is my story. So if I'm making, a, if I'm sculpting this, something that I want, like I'm trying to create, Mm -hmm. I have a story behind. I'm sure you have a yeah. reason behind you why you did everything that you did. Mm -hmm. For me, I have a reason why I wrote this bar and I said, do 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 do. They might it might go over yeah. your head. <laughs> like I, I, it might go over your head. And yeah. if, but there might be somebody that's like, ooh, I heard. What I you, got that. I got that. And I it's got like that. if you're looking at something, a picture, mm. uh, painting, and it's like somebody else that's maybe not as I want to say. Because some people just aren't creative like that. They mm -hmm. just kind of have that. Mm -hmm. You know that uh, this is how it's supposed to be. I can't look at things differently. Mm -hmm. I'm like, nah. If you just sit back and like, hmm, why, does yeah. she, why is this all black? Why is this painting all black and red? Mm -hmm. Maybe she's trying to capture depression or feeling sad or low. And it's looking at. I'm just. This is me. How I. Mm. And everybody has their per uh, perceptions with art too. Absolutely. So somebody might take your art and be like, oh, this is what she was trying to say. Mm -hmm. This is, or somebody else might be like, oh, this is what she's trying to say. Mm -hmm. But that's not really. I mean, it's opinionated. But really, you the, yeah. as an artist you knew what exactly you meant it as. Mm -hmm. And you can't really control what other people, kind of mm. how other people take it. You can try to paint this story. Absolutely. But at the end of the day, it always, I always go back to myself. Yeah. And I always go back to this is what I know it means to me. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, on that note, mm -hmm. we're going to end the interview right now. Right. Um, it was a great, great conversation. Mm -hmm. Again, conversations with love. We got Jada Johnson. Make sure y'all tap in with her. Also, mm -hmm. go ahead and plug your Instagram too. Oh, any um, social medias? Any, my any Instagram that. is a underscore. It's JJ Style underscore on Instagram. Um, and also, tune in. Um, I'll be having my thesis exhibition in November. All right, y'all heard it here first. Mm -hmm. And on that note, let's go. Yeah, that was good. We killed that. Yeah, we did. <laughs>